Welcome back to the next live stream from the, uh, the Sydney Summer. We are coming to you live from the floor here at the Expo at the ICC in Sydney. Uh, I am Dr. Pete. I run a solution architecture team here in Australia, and I'm joined by Chris. I'm the Solutions Architect Manager for the New South Wales Territory team here in Sydney. And together we are pleased to have Simon Elisha, who is also a manager in the uh, Solution Architecture team. Oh, do I head up the public sector team in uh, Australia New Zealand? Indeed. So we're kind of like twins a little bit, right? We are. Yeah, we it's are. Just, just a fraction. We started just different mothers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but so we're here today to talk about the uh, AWS podcast that Simon had originally started many, 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 many years ago. Many. And we're up to like episode 310 That's at this correct. point. That's correct. That's what went out on Monday. Wow. Awesome. Simon, so you do multiple of these uh, in a month, which is absolutely phenomenal. Your stats are off the charts. We have such a huge uh, audience listening to your two show. Tell us a little bit about, about the genesis and how you got the idea and how it all started. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things where I wanted to scratch my own itch. So <laughs> I sort of, uh, back in 2012, I was um, looking for a podcast on cloud and AWS yeah. and did the usual search and it wasn't there. I thought, well, if I'm looking for one, Surely other people that are. That was so early for podcasts, it was, 2012. It was before Very it was cool. Early. Yeah, before, before it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> so I, um, I invested heavily on, on recording equipment with uh, a little blue snowball that cost me like 50 bucks. Um, Only 50 bucks back 50 then? 50 bucks back then. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I had my Mac, plugged it into my Mac, and I'd sit in my office and record the podcast and then manually write RSS code oh. to put the podcast up. And yeah, it was pretty agricultural. Um, and I think I had 62 downloads that first month, and I was so excited. I thought, wow, this is... That'd be cool. And you were hosting it out of an S3 bucket, as I recall. Out of an S3 bucket, I decided I would use AWS t to communicate the talk about AWS. So it is 100% on AWS. So I was out of an S3 bucket. Then I put it onto CloudFront. Uh -huh. Duh. Um, <laughs> what else? Now, now there's a whole bunch of really fun automation that I do behind the scenes using Lambda and Athena. It's all serverless. Perfect. Um, but I've got a nice little flow there, so it's been fun. Been well, a lot you can of fun subscribe on lots of different platforms now too. Yes, so yeah. of course you can you can get through all the all the major podcatchers, so iTunes, um, Google Play, a million. There's a million different ones, but you, you can get them all through. And there's an RSS feed on the podcast page, so you Indeed. can just click on that and it just. You can subscribe between them. I was so listening to it earlier. RSS is the yeah. magic that ties the podcasting universe together. Isn't it amazing how all that syndication stuff just yeah, finally kind yeah. of came together over the last few years? It's it's, it's, it's brewing for a long time, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It's been interesting watching people kind of rediscover it. Yeah. And I think that the, the the challenge I've seen with podcasts in general is you've got to commit to them. Uh, I yeah. have a saying that a podcast is for life, not just for Christmas. It's kind of like a puppy. I was just saying, it's like, it's like a dog <laughs> analogy, right? Yeah, like the RSPCA totally. tells us, not just for Christmas. Everyone wants to make a podcast, they get to episode 10 and they're kind of exhausted yep. and it's yep. actual real work yep. and you see a lot of podcasts that are kind of beep, not yep. happening. Um, so the big focus here was to be committed. So I was like, right, Every week, there's a new episode going up, whether I'm traveling, not traveling, on holidays, what have you. Sometimes go to something. it's more than one a week. Sometimes yeah. it's more than one a week. Sometimes we do two a week. And you've done it live. I mean, you've done those yeah, at the various events. Live yeah. audiences. That's yeah. crazy. That's fun. And we're doing one actually at Sydney Summit this afternoon. Who is? So oh, we'll be doing one. Cool. So they'll be with, uh, with Nikki Klein, who's yeah. helping me co-host the update show. So super excited Fabulous. for that one. Yes. And also, Mr. Glenn Gore is going to make a sneak appearance as well. Excellent, old friend. Can't yeah. keep him off the show, which is good. Fabulous. <laughs> Great. But it's, 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 it's a lot of fun, but it, yeah, it takes it takes time, yeah. it takes effort. And so so you, go to, you go to reInvent, you do a ton of them there as well. Oh yeah, <laughs> reInvent is its own special journey. If you haven't gone to reInvent, you should go at least once in your career because it is <laughs> something pretty special. But I get very little sleep and it's, if you can picture me in a hotel room at about two in the morning, Kind of, deli kind of delirious, yeah. like I don't drink, with but kind of, yeah, 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 with a snowball, yeah. kind of delirious, trying not to knock the desk with my knee, uh -huh. trying to remember all the things that happened during the day to talk about. But the thing that gets me through is I love doing it because people the next day are like, oh, it was awesome getting the podcast and I'm up to date and this is what I use. And those are some of our most popular episodes throughout the year and they have a huge long tail. That's, that's the other really cool thing is that people listen to some of the episodes that are years old mm. because mm -hmm. they still have relevance or they're interesting to that domain, etc. Yeah. Well, some are timeless, right? Yeah. I mean, there's, yeah. There's, there's some of the fundamentals just don't change, right? But have you got any... So have you, speaking of episodes, do you have any favourites? Does anything come to mind where you kind of went, there's, that was a cracker of an episode and it was because of yeah. not something that you had initially thought of? I, I love the ones where I get to talk to customers about the cultural changes they make. Uh -huh. They're the ones that you get the biggest insights into, you know, what, what really worked and what didn't work. And people... One thing I like in IT is people are kind of quite honest about what works and what doesn't work, particularly when you get to the engineering level. Yeah. <laughs> and so when you get to the, the engineers, and I've always said, you know, when I speak to guests, I say, look, the, the, the concept is a couple of engineers sitting there having a coffee and uh -huh. a chat, 
and there just happens to be a recorder going. And, and once we get to that, it's like, well, I can tell you about how I build my team, how I structured it, what worked, what didn't work, what I do differently, etc. And people listening to that learn and, and, and get a real buzz out of that. So it's kind of like being and watching or rather listening over someone's shoulder and having yeah. that next level of experience and kind of learning from others. Well, Shoulders that's the of giants. Because you do, you do things like refactoring architectures, which <laughs> I don't understand how you do without the, the pictures, without the you picture. know? That was a chance. So you was don't a, have that, a blackboard with cool magnets that on That was it. a super fun episode that, yeah. that I got to do with Glenn. And um, what I did do as a, as a kind of cheat for that is I put a couple of objects on S3 yeah. that were the before and after picture if you right. wanted to follow it from home. But yeah, you've got to paint a word picture. Yeah. And one, one of the things that I've kind of become uh, renowned for in my own lunchbox is talking is saying code on the podcast. Uh -huh. Oh, you <laughs> like, read the code, right? Oh, I'll, yeah. read it out read loud. The, I'll read the commands. I don't know if it makes any sense, but you know, it's a stuff. It's it's you know, you, you work with what you got. But the, the good thing about like that that particular episode, the refactoring on, was a lot of fun because it was not so much about the design refactoring; it was the thought process we were going through to get to that refactoring. Uh -huh. as, as as you both know, mm. we spent an enormous amount of time on whiteboards talking about, well, we could do it this way, we should do it that way. Let's take this out, etc. Well, that's a question we just gotten from the audience. Yeah. What what's your ratio of preparation time to how long the podcast <laughs> is? Uh, I'd say it depends on the episode, but most podcast episodes it's a five to ten to one ratio. Really? So there's a lot of work that goes on in the post production. I do that all myself. Um, the, the booking of time, etc., is surprisingly yeah, time consuming. Scheduling is tough, oh, right? Oh my yeah. goodness! Um, but then there's just the opportunistic stuff. So I've got like a little microphone I can strap onto my iPhone and just go, let's have, let's do an interview and just have a chat, and just turn them around quickly. So yeah. that takes a bit of time. I've got a really nifty scripting tool I use now for the update shows, where I can gather all the items together and make that a bit easier. So I'm a big fan of automating where I can. But Quite a lot. If, if you want to do a podcast, you definitely should. You should just be aware it's a lot of time investment and you've got to continue with it. That's the big, and the like big thing. Puppy, which you it's know. Life. Yeah. I know it's for life. Because you so do the declare, I have to declare a bit conflict of, of interest. interest. <laughs> Here we go. So I should have for been those of you, you. Who, who, if you close your eyes, he sounds familiar. I may sound familiar because he runs the uh, AWS podcast. I run the AWS Tech Chat podcast with Correct. Shane Bellacino and Rast of others. Um, so, and by the way, I think we've cornered the AWS podcasting I business know, out of Melbourne. Melbourne, Australia. Well, the funny thing is when we moved buildings recently, we actually designed a proper soundproof oh, room. Oh, nice. With a button you push and it I goes know. on air. Oh, How cool is that, right? Sweet. And we've got double glazing on the windows yeah. and yeah. the door. It's really thick. Uh, we're going to yeah. deck it out some more of some camera equipment in, in the next, hopefully, this year. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so tune in to Simon's podcast and hopefully to uh, Tech Chat as a well. A question but for both of you from the audience. Can you subscribe on Alexa? Yes. Yes, you can. You yes. can. You can. And right, I, there you go. I used Fire to actually Drake. have a, an Alexa skill that did it, but what it would do is play the entire episode, <laughs> which people got really annoyed at. So, <laughs> no. no. So. Yeah, so we've actually disappeared. So, Tech Chat's actually also on um, Spotify. And Spotify, you can actually hook up your Alexa too as well. Um, so, yeah, so we're, we're having a lot of fun. So, so, tell us a little bit about your format, right? Because Tech Chat's a bit more about by the techs, for the techs, more for the geeks. We don't have customers or partners on yeah, the show. Yeah. But you have a lot more variety in your show. We, it, it's, it's interesting. It's a kind of a broad audience that we really aim to. So, so we'll often have C-level folks. We've had vice presidents on board, etc. But the, the main thing is you've got to have a genuine customer story to tell. Mm. So we won't have people on spruiking a product yeah. or telling you that the... It never rains or anything like that. This is the real stuff. It's like, tell us what worked, what didn't work, etc. So we had a really good um, public sector series recently that was really focused around cultural change and the things you had to do before you even got hands-on keyboard. Awesome. Super popular because, like, well, yeah. these are real problems that people are facing mm. or really interesting stories about how to digitise education and what's involved in that and the thought process you go through that. And also not that necessarily it's so complicated, but also how easy it is. So one of them was a really great story about how they uh, used Polly to voice a whole bunch of content, uh -huh. and they did it in an afternoon. And they're like, we're professors doing this. We're not, you know, your classic Technology, you know, made available to everybody. Exactly. Yeah. So where That's do you get the ideas? Do you have a huge backlog, backlog of, yeah, of so, topics? So it's a variety of things. So we, yeah. we have, um, we have a, a ticket queue, because where's yeah, life without course, a ticket queue? Yeah, of course. Kanban board or yeah, something like that. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> yeah. people say, hey, I want to talk about this, I want to talk about that. So we do that, but I, I get a lot of feedback from listeners. Yep. AWS podcast at Amazon.com is the place to do that. See how quick that came that out. That was very nice. But but a lot of ideas come from listeners, and uh, sort of trying to take the same philosophy as we do with our roadmap, which is 90% comes from customers. The same with the episode ideas, and the other thing is just trying to see what's what's interesting and new. What questions I get from customers in in the world that we circulate in. So, mm. for example, this conference, because oh, I'd like to hear you talk about you know Fargate or this or that. 
we'll do an episode and we'll grab that. Or I might just bump into someone interesting and cool. So, for example, um, Adam Lata, who's one Adam of our developer yeah, yeah. advocates. Specialist, yeah. He's actually in the Melbourne office, although we don't see each other very often. I said, <laughs> Adam, you and I were sitting down, we're recording some episodes. Well, it's actually right it's over there if you squint, right? Yeah, exactly. That was <laughs> AppMesh. That was the AppMesh one recently. Ah, there, yeah. yeah, that's so right. Exactly. You follow. And yeah. it was just so much fun to just have yeah. it. Like, a lot of the time I'm recording episodes that I'm just interested in to be purely selfish. Because this comes back to the origin story. You know? Yeah. Like, the podcast exists because I want to listen to podcasts about AWS. Unfortunately, I have to listen to you my own voice. Oh. Yeah. Um, I do get the often the weird thing where people come up to me and go, it's so weird to hear your voice coming out of your mouth. The other thing I've had is, it's been really weird talking to you because normally I listen to you at one and a half speed. Oh, yes, I've had that too, yeah, yeah. It yeah. sounds like you're talking really slowly. Yeah, chip, it's like, no. Or oh, no, yeah. chipmunk like, right? They play it too fast. Yeah, exactly. I don't take any, look, if you listen, I'm happy. That's great. So, you, you've launched a security series. What is that about? I saw that yeah, recently. Yeah, so there's a security series particularly focused on automated reasoning. So, we did an episode a while back with, with our VP of Automated Reasoning, which is a, a discipline around applying really strong mathematical models to prove if something is secure or reliable. So like code correctness. And yeah, code yeah, correctness, yeah, yeah. But, but it's kind of like on Beyond steroids. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a research area that's become Correct. practically oh, applied. Cool. Yeah. And we got some awesome feedback around that. So, oh, we'd love to hear this guy talk to more luminaries in this space. So spun up that sort of series and, and, and he's doing some really deep dive. Like, well, that stuff is really cool. If you just yeah. spent two seconds and I mean, that's awesome. It's right? I mean, amazing. It's about saying, hey, if I have a security policy of this, of A and B, you can actually compare them mathematically and yeah, prove exactly. to say, hey, this one's more secure than the other one. And everyone's using it who uses AWS because when you have that IAM policy evaluation exactly. going on, mm. that's the technology that's proving yeah. that if you say this policy is set to not let you do this, you can't do it. Yeah. Now, it kind of sounds easy, doesn't it? But when you actually think about how do you absolutely, you know, your neck's on the chopping block, this cannot happen. How do you prove that? With math. math. Maths is our friend. Well, and you're going to have a whole series about it, so obviously yeah. it's not... There'll be lots more coming yeah, on that yeah. one. So that'll, that'll come, that one's probably every month or so we'll see a, yep. a really deep dive episode. Yeah. So guys, one. by the way, this is fully interesting. If you have any other questions for Simon, throw it to a motto. It's, uh, they'll throw a ball yep. at us, but perhaps and, uh, we'll pick it up on that. But Simon, any unusual requests that you've had? Because I know, you know, being driven by customers is awesome, <laughs> but occasionally you, you kind of have to blink and go, <laughs> what the? You really want to do that? Any kind of moments like that um, that you can think of? Unusual it's request more, for it's, shows. It's, it's, it's more around, um, maybe if I could put it gently, what some people think might be interesting to lots of other people, not so interesting. May not be. Okay. Yeah, and so I'm really sensitive to giving a, a really good listener experience because, as, again, as a podcast listener myself, an immense amount of trust is given to someone to say, hey, you can live in my ears. And, yeah. and people will tell me, oh, I wash the dishes listening to your podcast or I mow the lawn listening going to your podcast. Going to work or... Going yeah, to work, yeah, yeah. you know, in the, in the gym is an <laughs> odd one. I don't think uh -huh. I'm particularly motivated. <laughs> Run faster. <laughs> we, should but, put, we should put subliminal messaging in our podcast, Simon. No, that's not It's like, happen. run <laughs> faster, lift more heavier weights, uh, you know, have a better workout. But the thing that I learned... Mind-body fitness. Exactly. <laughs> the thing that I learned very early is that people will forgive not the best sound quality mm -hmm. if the content is good. Yeah. yeah. And they actually prefer less produced and better content than super professionally produced yeah. and... Yeah, content. How so. many downloads do you get now for an episode? Can uh, you say? I can't say okay. exactly. More than you but started. But <laughs> it's a lot more than 62. <laughs> yeah, uh, there yeah. are many more zeros at the end. <laughs> yeah. And and really, if, if I can Is share anything... Is it more anything, than Pete's? I mean, really, that's the question. Oh, he, he wins. <laughs> we're, we're, yeah. we're not competitive at all. Not at all. But, no. <laughs> it's a lot more. But we're very niche. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you're the small batch artisanal. Oh, artisanal, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you've been around yeah. for how many years now? Uh, since 2012. That's a, that's a so long it's time. A lot of, yeah. That's from the it's origins, a, pretty much. Yeah, of, yeah. yeah when you do started, you have right? any, like, topics that are your dreams that you want to do? You have to, like, the stars have to align? I think I think there's some guests that we're going to get on that are pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to mention at this point. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. I might comment. be lucky and get Pete on one day. I don't know. Uh, actually, we should do the reverse. Like, you on my show, you... you you want oh. on yours? Will that cause, will that cause a, 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 a sort of break in the space Crossing time continuum? Crossing of the streams. Yeah. <laughs> so that could be scary. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are in Melbourne. Yeah. We have a studio. Yep. So, so there's no excuse. Hey, so how's doing. this? If you guys want us on each other's shows, let us know. Don't the young kids call it a collab? A collab. A collab. A mashup. A mashup. A mashup. A mashup. Yeah, it's like the crossing of the two streams. And we'll do but this, the main right? thing to remember is to subscribe to the podcast. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We the, the biggest thing I get is people go, oh, I had no idea the podcast existed. I give out podcast stickers like, oh, my God. Well, so you have podcast? episodes so, so frequently, you need to subscribe. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, real yeah. quick, let's wrap it up. So, so how do we find a podcast? Tell us what, what You go to the you, you Google AWS podcast. You'll get it. It's the number one link. Um, AWS.amazon.com slash podcast. You can get it from there as well. Uh, any of your podcatchers, if you type in AWS podcast, that should be the first hit you get. 
Easy peasy lemon squeezy. You got 300 episodes to catch up on. Exactly. Yeah. Start Woo. listening. Guys, <laughs> there'll so be a quiz. So thanks for tuning in. So great to have you on here. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thanks. Guys, keep watching. We've got a heck of a lot more sessions coming up. Uh, if you're here, come and say hi. Get some more t-shirts. Uh, but bye for now. Talk to you in a few minutes. See ya.